So what's happening, everybody? Um, I posted on social media a couple of days ago about doing a bunch of spreadsheets for the hospitality industry for free. I'm just going to put them up on an article. You can just go click, download, done. Use them to your heart's content, but they're, they are pretty in-depth. And so I wanted to sort of show you a quick walkthrough on how to use these spreadsheets. So let's start with the top left corner, A1. That's a nice start point. Um, my macro categories. So these go down my left-hand side, my bourbons, my brandy and grapes, my gins, all in alphabetical order. Uh, the reason why I do this is because this spreadsheet can be used and cut and paste across to your inventory. So your, your first six sheets, uh, your first six columns here, that's basically all the information you need for your inventory, your bottle size, your bottle cost, supplier, SKU for ordering, so on and so forth. But this is sort of a very easy cut and paste across for the whole spreadsheet to start your inventory sheet off. So let's kick it off. Um, so let's say Basil Hayden's. Now, I don't know the price of Basil Hayden's off the top of my head. I should, but I don't. Um, so let's do Basil Hayden's. I'll eventually get there with the typing. Skew and supply, we're not going to worry about that right now. So size of volume, your bottle size is super important because it is part of the formulas. You type in 750 mils. Now, <clears throat> I know in the US and in Canada, we have this sort of weird um, mils and bottles, but we measure in ounces. So this is going to be a, a trend all the way through. So your bottle size in milliliters, 750 mils. Now your bottle cost, let's just chuck in $35 to make it easy. So automatically it's already costed out a quarter ounce, a half ounce, a three quarter ounce, and a full ounce of <clears throat> cost for a uh, ounce or a bottle of Basil Hayden. Now, why is this important? I like this because it really helps with your cocktail costing going forward. Maraschino, chartreuse, um, you may use only use an ounce of Basil Hayden. You may use an ounce of something else. So this really helps with your costing straight off the hop. You look at budget. Now, usually I used to have this all combined into one formula because I knew in my head how it worked, but I wanted to make it super simple for you guys. So you just type in what your budget projected budget is. So 22%, done. So this column here, these two columns here, <clears throat> I'm really, I really find important. So most bars have a baseline price. It's the base start point where all their spirits get charged to. I do anyway. So $8 is my starting price for everything on my back bar. <clears throat> so my projected ounce is just what it is to make my 22% cost. And so if we type in eight, there we go you got your, your cost of an $8 ounce. Now, this is important because as you get uh, through your, your spreadsheet, you're going to have a mixture of profit makers and loss leaders. And loss leaders are usually big contribution items. Your 25-year-old scotch or your expensive cognacs. They may be loss leaders, but you know you're going to be putting bank in the, in the well, bank in the bank, bank in your till by selling an ounce of that. Now, you may not be making your profit margin on that or your cost, but at the end of the day, you're making massive contributions. So this is where I like to play around with the projected versus actual because it really dials in exactly where your loss leaders and your profit makers sort of sit. Now, this next two sections is something very interesting. This is uh, for a double. Now, in Canada, we do doubles. I know in the US, a lot of you do two ounce pours as your, as your house pour. We don't do that usually in Canada. One, because of laws. Two, because of costs. Um, but we have a two, uh, a two ounce multiplier. Now, some places are 1.6, some places 1.75. It has to be a multiplier in this formula. It can't be like a dollar amount. It has to be a multiplier. So let's just say it's a 1.8 which means that we're making for every two ounces, we're making 1.8 of the money, which is usually what we sort of sit as like, if you order a double, it's cheaper than ordering two ounces. Um, and so there we go. So now we've got our cost of for an ounce, our cost of goods for an ounce, 17.5, well under budget. And our cost of goods for two ounces, well under budget as well. Now you may look at that and go, well, I can drop the price down that, but that's why this next section here, this overall like second tier. So we're looking, the first line there is all micro, all your micro cost per spirit. This section here is your second tier micro macro um, of your category. Now, why is this important? Now I slid this in because if you're a gin bar, you may price your gins a little bit more aggressively because that's what you want to move. If you're a whiskey bar, you may price your whiskeys a little bit more because you want those to move. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different like factors that come into this. And um, it really does look good as an average cost. Just sort of see where you sit. If you're already above 22%, in this average cog for this set section of bourbon, you may want to relook at your little micro things. And that goes down for every section. And then at the very bottom, we have the grand total. So again, this should be 
below 22% or on the money at 22%. So next up, let's do cocktails as a tab. Now I've got six tabs to get through. So, <clears throat> so pretty simple, straightforward cocktail name. I gave you four spirit columns and four non-alcoholic columns. Now, if one, if you have five spirits or a tiki bar or something, just change that up or add another, add, add another row. It won't change much in here. So let's say spirit, let's just do a, uh, a Manhattan. So three ingredients. So $2 for the rye. One dollar for the the vermouth, and I'm not. I'm just p- punching in numbers to show you how it is. And non-alcoholic. Let's throw in a bottle, a bit of it. Let, let's throw in five cents, just to be like for bitters. Let's say Angostura bitters, five cents for two dashes. So you got three dollars oh five. Look at budget again, twenty two percent, and bang, projected cocktail cost. And so now you can go, okay, well my actual cocktail cost is fourteen dollars, and I'm still making my profit margin. And so now you can go all the way along that and sort of build your cocktail cost out that way. And you end up with your total average at the very bottom, which should reflect that 22%. Now, wine and draft beer is something fun that I did for you guys. So if you're a wine bar, and I did this so that I, I sort of thought about every venue that I could possibly imagine utilizing this spreadsheet. And this is the wine bar is definitely one. Again, we've got the six columns for your your inventory that you can definitely cut and paste. But these are the three columns that I found very interesting. So if you're a wine bar, you may have a two ounce pour. So let's let's kick it off. Let's. I'm not going to bother putting a product name in. Let's say 750 mils for your bottle. Your bottle cost is $15. Now you've got a taster. So a taster is a two ounce pour or a three ounce pour. Your glass size. Now in BC and Canada, we usually sit between five and six ounces. All depends where you want to sort of sit. I'm going to go with five ounces in this one. Now, my other pour size is something interesting. Now you can delete, as you can see, you can delete the taste and you can delete this one if you're just doing glasses because it'll it'll skew all the numbers going on. You have to sort of keep up, delete, delete, delete. Um, some bars and restaurants do nine ounce pours as like their moxie pour or their bigger pour up. And so there we go. And so now we look at it, wine budget, 30 to 45%. It's a big gap. But again, if you're a wine bar, you may be wanting to make a little bit more money. If you're not a wine bar and you only have one or two wines as a cocktail bar, you may be okay with making 45% on 2% of your sales. So let's say your wine budget, let's say 32%, just for argument's sake. As soon as you type this in, bang, your projected tasters and everything roll straight across. So why does this? Why is this important right now? Is that it gives you a, a sense of exactly where your cost should be. Instead of tweaking, 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 you know to make thirty percent cost on this taster, you need to charge three seventy five. Now you may go four bucks. I'm going to make a little bit more money on my taster, so because then people want to get more glasses, and I'm not just going to sell tasters all day long. Your glass. Let's go nine fifty. Let's just go above a little bit, and then a projected other pour. Let's go sixteen dollars because you're adding, you're ordering more. So you, I want to make that contribution. I'll take a bit of a hit on that, and then for the bottle, forty five bucks. And so now we've got all our cogs right here. Bang, bang, bang. And then as we fill in this uh, spreadsheet right here, we'll get an average cogs for all of these, so that you can sort of really nail down your micros into your second tier. So I thought that was a little bit fun because a lot of bars and restaurants have this and they divide like, oh, the price of this divided by this. And so this way, it just lines up your costs over and over and over again. So let's do draft beer. I did the same sort of thing for draft beer because a lot of beer bars out there, they'll do tasters, they'll do a mid-range glass size and then do a full pint or a, a certain one. So let's say volume. Now, Obviously, I'm not sure in the US how you guys measure. I'm sure it's in liters, but let's say a 50 liter, 50 liter keg. It works out the thing. So you have to do just the liter ridge. You don't need to work out 50,000 mils or anything like that. Just 50, 50 liters rolls out into the equation. Keg costs 350. That's a pretty expensive keg, but 350. Now, again, these are my taster uh, looks just like I did with the wine bar. So let's do a five ounce taster. 15 ounce glass, 20 ounce pint. And so there you go. You got your taster cost, your glass cost, and your other pour cost, your pint cost. Now, when when you download this, you can slide in whatever definitions you want into this, into all the all the ones. You can say five ounce, six ounce, all that sort of stuff, so that your your managers underneath you or your bartenders that are coming up can really understand exactly what it is and not just think about it in their head. So draft cost 20 26%. Um, let's say 22 for draft. Let's make some coin. Uh, 22%, bang. All your projected costs are rolled over. So then you can type in actual taste of five bucks, uh, a glass 14. And then we can take a bit of a hit on the pint and just do an 18 ounce pint. 
And there you go. You got your costs for all of them. And again, it'll roll over into your average cogs for the whole thing. And then of course, that'll be the same because it is just draft. You can go bang, bang, done. Second to last, we've got our, our bottle beer, which is super simple because you just go beer cost, two bucks, budget, 22. And then you go $9 a bottle and there you go. And you can roll this in and you, I've done lagers and stout and we beer. Again, you can do this for your draft as well because it'll help like, oh, I want to be a, a cask bar. I want to sell all cask beer. I don't want to do bottles at all. Like I'm just going to take a massive hit on the bottle beer and push cask beer, uh, by keg beer and my cask beer. So I'm going to just run like a, let's just run a crazy 28% on my beer and be done with it. Um, so that's, uh, that's how you can roll it out. So that's a super simple one. Again, it'll come down to your final, your final number here. So projected overall budget, I, I thought about this today, actually, while I was working, I was like, okay, well, what's, what, what can we do with this? So there's two ways you can do this. You can either plug in these numbers from these spreadsheets. So for spirits, you can take that number that from after costing everything out and slide it in here. So but we're going to just go with 22. So we're going to do 22% here. Uh, cocktails, we're going to do 25. So we want it a little bit higher. 32. Now, again, I'm not even going back to my numbers. 26 and what do we say 20 no no 22 for beer and 26 for bottle beer now you can sort of look and go okay well what's my overall sales mix how does you, if you're a brand new bar if you want to be a cocktail bar you're going to definitely have a higher spirits and cocktail sales maybe anywhere up to 70 percent if you're a wine bar you're going to have much higher wine sales and so on and so forth but what this does is sort of projects out exactly where your costs overall for your bar should be at the end of the month, especially if you really use those costing sheet numbers, it's going to give you a pretty precise little number. So let's just say spirits, I want to sell 35%. Uh, cocktails, I'm going to be a 30% uh, cocktail box. I want to sell more whiskey than anything. Um, wine, we're not going to sell much wine. Let's just go 15% on that one. And let's just go 10 and 10 for that 100% sales mix. Overall, with that sort of weighted average, you should be sending about 25.7% um, costings overall now of course it, the sales mix is going to be much closer to where your overall bar cost should be if that weight stays and every couple of months if you recost then you can go over your PLs, plug in the numbers and sort of get a rougher idea it should line up but this is the the big spreadsheet that i really wanted to do for you guys i hope that makes sense uh, i'm going to post this video on youtube and then post it with the article when i post this um, so that you can sort of see where i'm sort of sitting with it if you've got any questions you can email me re reach out to me do whatever you need to do um, i'm always happy to take questions and answers about this sort of stuff um, i'm really geeking out hard on the spreadsheets right now i'm hoping to get more and more done this one i'm going to release today or tomorrow um, and then I'll be able to upload more and more as we go forward. But this has been a big project for me and I've really enjoyed doing this. So I hope that helped. Again, any questions, hit me up, info at soulhospitality.com. Or if you want to do something really crazy, I've actually just joined community and you can actually text me questions anytime at, at all. And the number is 250-999-4182. And so you can text me and I can answer questions directly through my community app. So if that's good for you guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. And again, happy spreadsheeting. Bye.